Happy Wednesday, Mary. Happy Wednesday. It is happy sunny day. I have yeah. uh, both of my windows open and mm -hmm. and it's very light here and looks looks nice. By the way, I have noticed today that since we are here in my office with Mary, my assistant and and the uh, we are I've been watching today, if not watching but noticing that lots of passing buyers and mm -hmm. people are mm -hmm. Going outdoors and walking. It's nice enough to walk outside today. Mm -hmm. Beautiful day. So are you feeling okay? Yep, feeling good. Yes. Feeling good. Good to be here this morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. That's what we want. And we hope that everybody is doing well and staying safe and healthy and you and your families and loved ones. And that is our prayer for every single day. Yeah. It's a time when I, I, I was watching some movie. Uh, long time ago, 100 years ago, and there was a story about a general, of course, who served in the Second World War, and then the, uh, somebody made a song out of him because uh, he felt that when was, war was over and he was done with his duty and all that, he went home and he felt that he didn't, he didn't have nothing to do. So sometimes when I'm thinking, oh, what do we do with the pastors when you have coronavirus going on? Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have that physical connection with your right. parishioners and church members. Yet, I think there's more pastoring today than probably sometimes before because mm -hmm. a, uh, we are trying to make connections. We feel that, at least Mary, I feel that I have heavy load about our church family yeah, and definitely. people and community and mm -hmm. country and lots of matters to pray for. and. And then, of course, we are trying to connect with everybody else. Right, right. we can. I think um, in so many ways, everybody's lives have uh, slowed down or stopped even as far as the busy, hectic schedule. Yes. So it's a, it's a opportunity to uh, spend more time uh, in the Word, like we're going to be talking about today, but also just with, with our families, if, we're, if we have children at home and our spouses and... Um, just uh, being able to have those kind of family times that we don't often yeah. have time for when we are in full swing of the hectic schedule. So there's there's a lot of different kinds of connecting that can happen. Yes. But um, but like you said, unfortunately, worshiping together isn't one of them. So yeah. we need to um, uh, offer ways that we can connect. And thankfully, we have things like Facebook, Facebook Live, and, yeah, and that, those kinds of things that we can connect with each other using. Mm -hmm. And I hope and I pray that when we come out of this, and this will pass, friends, this will pass, and hopefully sooner than later, but I believe that this will bring something beautiful out of, we will get something beautiful and good out of this. Uh, I think uh, there will be deeper appreciation for everyday values, on friendships, on family, mm -hmm. on community. And that togetherness that we've been missing for quite some time. Yes. yes. Uh, in this country and all over, so it seems like, a, seemed like a, this is calling us to, to be one and one community and, and one church mm -hmm. and, and yeah. be really caring and loving each other and respecting. And I think that's what we've been missing yeah. quite some yeah. time. Yeah. And I think that's a big. Big plus is coming our way once we get through it, and it's already there. I'm sure that mm -hmm. great appreciation for many everyday things that uh, we have taken for granted. By the way, uh, this is now the first uh, little Bible reflection time we are about to do with with Mary Miller and my. I am Pastor Timo Carvoning. We serve at the Berea United Methodist mm -hmm. Church, as most of you know, but there may be some some new faces there watching and sharing with us a little bit as we are trying to uh, see what the Bible talks about certain matters and uh, not that we can cover the whole Bible in such a short period no. of time but we try to dig in into some something that the year we believe is is maybe maybe very interested and interesting for us all to mm -hmm. to take a take a look and study together and Actually, there is a gospel reading that we've been chatting here before you guys came came to this program, came into this program. This is now the gospel of Mark. And I hope that, guys, if you are watching, you get your Bibles handy and 
you open your Bibles on Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. And what we've been kind of looking, this is from verse 18 through 22. Mm-hmm. Uh, from verse 18 through 22, and there is, there is a um, moment where uh, people came to Jesus and questioned it about fasting. They wanted to talk to Jesus and question about fasting. And that's pretty interesting, interesting reading, Mary, because Jesus, again, using a couple of parables to make his point. And now these two parables may not be easy reading to us. Well, they may be easy reading to us, but not easy to understand because these parables sits right in that Palestine context yeah. at that time. And to us, especially to people like we are living in the middle of postmodern and postmodernism, so these two parables may not ring home, may not ring the bell. So uh, we are going to kind of see what, how we understand these two parables and this paragraph. And by the way, talking about fasting, of course, as a, as a Methodist preacher, I can't help myself, but I would like to remind us all how important thing fasting is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As we are living in the middle of uh, Lenten season, and we've been talking about self-denial and, and focusing on Jesus and, of course, on the uh, passion narrative in the Gospels and, and trying to see what all happened to Jesus. Mm-hmm as he took our place on the cross. And this walk is so very important to us. And guys, even we can have church services together uh, physically in the sanctuary, but uh, let's let's make best out of this season. And mm-hmm. it is still Lenten and it is, it, is still, it is still time that we've been called and encouraged to um, to follow Christ all the way through this 40 days of uh, period and season before the Easter comes. But mm-hmm. fasting is so important to us. As we all know that there are six means of grace in the Methodist Wesleyan tradition. We call them means of grace. Uh, means of grace means that we believe they are special means, special, special instruments, mm-hmm. special channels for us people to to, to which God bestow his grace upon our lives. Right, right. And of course, there are the two sacraments, the That's water right. baptism and then and the Holy Communion, Holy Communion mm-hmm. the Lord's Supper, Holy Eucharist, the right. different names mm-hmm. for the same right, thing. Right. And then there is fasting. Mm-hmm. And then there is Christian conferencing. Right. And then there is prayer. Right. Like our church father, John Wesley, believed that prayer is the main means because anybody can pray anybody can pray at any time anytime, anytime yeah. in any given place yes. uh-huh. and of course while we pray we draw ourselves right into his presence mm-hmm. in the presence of almighty god so yes fasting is very important to us and this is uh what uh, they questioned it uh, uh, from jesus they wanted to ask jesus about fasting and we have different translations here on the table. I don't know how many you have, probably two or three, and I have a couple of here myself. And I was going to ask you, Mary, if you can please read what translation you have before you now. I have the Common English Bible. Okay, that is that is something we use in the sanctuary. Bible. That is, uh-huh. If you don't mind to read it through what, what, what it says through uh, Common Bible translation, and then we listen to these words, and then we go from there. I probably read from some other translation after after we hear this. So again, this is uh, Mark 2, verses 18 through 22, and this is the Common English Bible. John's disciples and the Pharisees had a habit of fasting. Some people asked Jesus, why do John's disciples and the Pharisees' disciples fast, but yours don't? Jesus said, the wedding guests can't fast while the groom is with them, can they? As long as they have the groom with them, they can't fast. But the days will come when the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a piece of new, unshrunk cloth on old clothes. Otherwise, the patch tears away from it, the new from the old, and makes a worse tear. No one pours new wine into old leather wineskins. Otherwise, the wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine would be lost and the wineskins destroyed. But new wine is for new wineskins. And that's the word of God to the people of God. It is the word of God to the people of God, yes. 
And by the way, I've been asked many times, I don't know if people have asked you, Mary, but I remember people asking many times, Pastor, what is the, the best translation? What is the best mm-hmm. and, and right yeah. Bible trans- translation? And of course, some people believe that it's uh, old King James only, and mm-hmm. some people have different preferences. I always intend to say that the best translation is the Bible you are reading. Mm, the Bible right. you are reading, the Bible mm-hmm. translation you feel most comfortable with, that is officially approved translation. That's the best translation, and uh, and, and that's my 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 belief. Let me read. Um, I have a gift Bible that I've been using, and I fell in love with this translation. I, uh, as somebody who didn't speak English as a native, I don't know if you noticed that, but <laughs> I didn't speak English. Um, from the beginning, so English is something I have learned. I have two natives, I have Finnish and Swedish, and then I learned English a little bit uh, on the road. But um, of course, New International that I grew up with, and when I was a student and I studied, that that's translation I feel pretty comfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then I also uh, like New King James translation, that mm-hmm. is uh, very good. But then this is a gift, this for me, uh, it is Life Application Study and New Living Translation. Let's listen what this translation says about this paragraph and then right. we, then we um, talk about it. And this is uh, Gospel of Mark uh, and the second chapter and from the verse 18 through 22. It says, Once when John's disciples and Pharisees were fasting, some people came to Jesus and asked, Why don't your disciples fast like John's disciples and the Pharisees too. Jesus replied, do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. They can't fast while the groom is with them. But somebody, someday the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. Besides, besides who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new pads would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skins would both be lost. New wine calls for new wineskins. Oh, they, okay, Mary, there are, there are the two parables that sometimes are challenging people to understand what mm-hmm. in the world Jesus is talking about here. Mm-hmm. And what is your take? What is your take about it? So the first one with the, the, the cloth, um, that says, No one sews a, no, uh, sews a piece of new, unshrunk cloth on old clothes. Yes. Well, I'm not a seamstress, um, but I understand as much as this that if you have a piece of material and it hasn't been shrunk and you sew it to a piece of material or to a to clothing that has been washed many many times and therefore has has shrunk and then the first time you go to wash it that um, new material will shrink and the uh the stitches will be will be pulled away from the material for the old material because now the material's smaller so it'll it'll pull away from it and that's what it's saying when it says um that it will make a worse tear it'll actually make it uh larger or or you'd be in a, in a worse situation than you were before you put the patch on so that's what that one means to me literally is um that the uh the the new piece of cloth that's not shrunk will actually tear away once it's been washed um with the with the old material so put it this way your intentions as a repairer may be good right <laughs> but it right. doesn't do the job it's it going to make it job. worse right right <laughs> okay what about the other one what about the other parable? the other one um speaks about of wine the wine mm-hmm. um so the the reason it's a little hard to picture this is that we we picture wine in glass bottles um but they they used uh goat skins um yes for wine and um when the wine was in the goat skin, it would, um, as it would ferment, it would um, expand, and therefore the goat skin would get stretched out um, kind of to its limit. Um, so if you took an old wine skin and put new wine in it, that new wine would again uh, 
expand and it would cause the old wine skin that was already uh, stretched to its limit and kind of brittle already, it would cause it to, to burst. And then you would lose the wine and be in, uh, again, worse situation than you were before. You would lose the wine and the wine skin. So neither one of those really does what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. Now I'm not wine drinker, but if you drink wine, a glass of wine, that's 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 okay, and that's not what we are talking about here. But I know that in that context, uh, and Israel in Palestine at that time, and in anywhere in, in, for example, in southern Europe, I'm coming from northern Europe, and they are milk drinkers. I know they drink lots of beer there and, and many stuff, but now uh, wine is very much used in southern Europe, in Palestine, in Israel, as just a table drink. Mm -hmm. You know, something that people drink uh, when they have dinner and supper, and and they are not drinking it to get drunk, but they are drinking it because it's a it's a table drink. That's what you right. do mm -hmm. if you don't drink only water or something. But anyway, so that was very common sense example and parable. So what Jesus was doing here, he was connecting with his listeners. These two uh, things and common things, uh, common examples from your ordinary life mm -hmm. is something I'm using here. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Jesus point. And, and let's make sure that you get the point, you get the word across. So these are the things. But then you wonder, but the question here was about fasting. Mm -hmm. So what is the big picture here? What is the real thing here? It can't be just that Jesus was giving a sewing training to uh, to his listeners no, or, no. or how to how to make how, to, right. how to make sure that their wine remain good um, there there is like something deeper here there's something deeper here and sometimes by the way when you study the new testament and the old testament the contextual thing is always very critically important so that you put yourself first of all take yourself in that narrative if you can as a reader mm -hmm. take yourself right in the middle of that action <laughs> take you bring yourself there and then you start asking questions write down all the questions you might have and then some many times you have more questions as a bible reader than answers mm -hmm. self that i have much more questions than answers and then sometimes it happens when we have more questions we said well bible is difficult and i need to make many sense, sense to me and and then you give up with it, but you shouldn't, because asking questions is the first step in learning. Yes. Mm -hmm. And asking questions, and you bring yourself in the middle of the narrative, and then here, the one question is that, what more is here? Mm -hmm. What is the big picture? Right. Why these two parables were brought in? Yes, Jesus always taught by using parables. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus' parables, most of the time, were in country context. Mm -hmm. in country context and then when you listen to Paul and you read about Paul now Paul was a city guy right okay. now many of his examples were from city life mm -hmm. you will find that when you read the epistles of Paul but here the big picture is teaching about fasting mm -hmm. and what is good fasting and what is not good fasting what is what is something that we ought to be doing. Of course, here, I really believe, Mary, that Jesus was talking about himself. Yeah. yeah. Something about what he's bringing something new, something totally different, something new. There is newness. And then it is sometimes hard time to try to, I guess what I'm hearing him say, that I, I didn't come to fix something that was old and useless already. Mm -hmm. But I'm instead I'm going to bring you something totally new. Why to try to fix something using these patches and they are just tearing your broken things more broken and making them more broken and then the wine, new wine will just uh, you will ruin the new wine and the old wine. So let's not mix with this too. So the newness and the freshness, the, something that he would bring what is the key here. What about fasting? What is your take on this fasting issue? Here? Well, that I was think, actually the first question that uh -huh. was brought to him. Well, I think um, I think it's good to uh, to look at who's asking the question about fasting. Yes. Um, so, John's disciples and the Pharisees' disciples had a habit of fasting. Well, 
the reasons that they would be fasting would be uh, connected to to um, ritual, connected to rules and and um, kind of the old, I guess I guess we'd say the old covenant, um, and uh, and the reasons that they would do that it was would be to um, to uh, follow the law to make sure that they had all the all the uh, outward um, actions that they were supposed to have to be uh, um, religious and so that's what I think they're they're uh, coming from is from well you know we're doing all the right things but your disciples aren't doing the things that we are saying mm -hmm. or that we believe are the right things am I on the right track there I um, think so I think so you are okay. yes um, of course remember later Jesus criticized Pharisees and Sadducees um they they were they 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 were doctored a little bit on different pages, Pharisees and Sadducees, and we don't have to talk about that now, but anyway, they were representing the old mm -hmm. uh testament, but Jesus uh, criticized uh them both for not following the law, but they they were making they were adding on matters and things rules mm -hmm. and regulations Additional laws. to to yes. And many times, uh, after adding on and making excuses, they were turning it back to people, asking people to follow it, follow all these rules and regulations, uh, something that they didn't follow. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of making uh, their, their religion look good, and, and they're making themselves looking good. Uh, for example, now making public announcement uh, about their fasting. Mm -hmm. And making it visible thing that so that even outsiders could sing that the uh, okay these guys are fasting and making a big thing out of it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they they have reason to ask Jesus well you don't follow the same rituals here so why you are acting like you are a big teacher of the of the of the word of God and a big prophet but you don't follow these rituals that they do and then Jesus wanted to make the big difference big difference between him and mm -hmm. then this old that was already useless and weak and didn't help anybody. Right, right. Um, of course, talking about Jesus' relations with the law mm -hmm. was very solid. He said, I am not going to take anything out of this law, right. but I'm going to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when he was crucified, nobody can say that he broke the one piece of the writings of the of the gods or the uh, uh, sacred law mm -hmm. and the year so he didn't break the law but the problem was here that uh, Jesus say that fasting and the content of fasting is so very important and by modeling that that's okay but you don't get you don't get the point why we are fasting and he was saying using again this metaphor about groom referring to himself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I am still with you while you are fasting and mourning for you. You need to follow all the way through the journey. I am here. Of Jesus' to, journey. Jesus' mm -hmm. journey, yeah. what I am about to complete. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm gone, and then when you want to draw yourself, bring yourself closer to me, then you have fasting as a means. Mm -hmm. uh, to draw you closer to me and to learn more about saying no to your physical needs and saying yes to your spiritual needs. Right. And of course, fasting is right the center and heart of uh, the Jesus is right the center and heart of your fasting. Of fasting. Mm -hmm. You are not fasting because you want to promote some rituals and neat things in the church, mm -hmm. but you are promoting because you want to get closer to Jesus. Right. You want to say no to your physical needs and everyday needs. You want to take time for just for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, there's no point of fasting because I'm, I'm, here, I'm right here with you. Right. Okay. If you want to ask, you spend time with me. But Pharisees and these, these other followers of the certain rituals, they didn't want to do that. They wanted to find where Jesus was doing wrong. Right. They right. wanted to mm -hmm. point at him, you are doing wrong. And that's probably behind this request. Mm -hmm. You are not even doing as good as these Pharisees are doing because right. see how they are fasting and publicly and making point out of it that look at us how we are fasting. Mm -hmm. So that's the big picture of their Jesus. Jesus is the main thing about the scripture right here. Mm -hmm. He's the main character here yes. uh -huh. and he's the center of this reading. By using these 
sometimes preach challenging parables to understand the point, uh, let's not get lost that these parables are not the main thing here. That was Jesus' way to communicate to his listeners at that time, as it is today. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. our context is a little bit different right, today. Right. Am I right? right. Mm -hmm. So, but they are still working. They are still working. So, putting, giving something, putting something new that Jesus represent. Right. Trying to use him as somebody who fixed a little bit my life and helping me to correct something that right. I, I feel to may be wrong. Put a patch on it, yeah. Put mm -hmm. patch on it. Yeah. And Jesus says, that's not going to work. I want all of you. All of you, yes. I want and your heart. Make all things new. I, mm -hmm. I, because I want to make everything new in your life. And that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. That's what he always is after. Not just a fixing something that we've been trying to fix already and some, some getting some help from religion too. Sometimes, by the way, Mary, I have met lots of religious people and he, I have to admire them because they are running so heavy meal, religious meal, you know, that the mill, meal yeah. of religion. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have to admire them. I've been in, in, in Israel a few times and I have to admire them, the ways they do their uh, rituals and, and, and prayers. Uh, it takes it takes devoted person to do that. And now, uh, and they are longing for Messiah, and they are they are praying, and they are pouring their heart. Yet, they deny him. Mm -hmm. They uh, we don't want you. We want somebody else. Yeah. Right, right. And guess what? If you want, if you don't want Jesus, you, you are going wrong way. Yeah. yeah because yeah. that's what we want. Okay. Anything else about this reading? Of course, there's so much there's to so it. There's so much more. Yeah. <laughs> We, we, we are just kind of a little bit touching it, but the uh, Bible is interesting. Mm -hmm. By the way, now, since we are living in the middle of this uh, quarantine situation, so please uh, take time for your Bibles and read it and bring your family around your dinner table and kitchen table, whatever that place is, and, and read it and listen to it and ask questions about it, because mm -hmm. now it's time, if ever before. Yes, that's right. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, hey, um, we have had a little moment. Uh, we try to keep this about half an hour long. Uh, I know that, um, and hopefully this has been an inspiration for you to move on and read more about it and do some more thinking. And, and, and the, uh, you can send us um, some other inspirational Bible readings, and we try to, if, if we don't have anything else to talk about, we, we try to see what we can find about uh, those recommended, recommended Bible readings that you sent us. And, but we want to pray for everybody. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for our church and you church family are so dear to us. Uh, we've been praying uh, for you and we keep on praying for everyone. We pray for our uh, community. Mm -hmm. We pray for our country and we pray that uh, Lord, please uh, give us something new. Give us something new to your word, to the presence of your Holy Spirit. Give us something new. And let us uh, experience something new that only Jesus, you can give. Can you, Mary, lead us in prayer? I would be glad to. Yes. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these moments to share uh, together, even in a, a little bit different mode um, via Facebook Live. And Father, we thank you for your word that it is life-giving and living and new to us each and every time we open it. We ask that you would continue to uh, help us to know that you are close to each one of us, even though we're not physically close with each other, but that we know by your Holy Spirit that you are close uh, to our hearts. We lift up those who are especially um, fearful during these days. We lift up needing your healing touch we lift up those who are um, troubled uh, heavily by financial burdens. And Father, we know that you are great enough and big enough to take care of all of these needs. So we cling to you, we turn to you, and we ask you, Father, to, uh, to walk with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Peace to everyone. <laughs>